After that stage, you're expecting something much worse, but then it's like, Hello, I'm Plant Man. Oh, I'm dead. Everything I say is based on my own opinions and experience. I'm not speaking for the public, and my feedback should be treated as such. You are watching Nico Evaluates. With 25 years of experience on Mega Man games, 7 years of doing the No Miss Buster Only challenge, and countless Snapster races, as well as being the QA tester for Mega Man Unlimited, I'm here to tell you my honest opinion on different Mega Man games. So sit tight and learn. Hello people and welcome to Nico Evaluates Mega Man 6. In the year 20XX AD, the first annual robot tournament was held. Nice little intro here. With eight of the world's most powerful robots, but... Mr. X, the sponsor of the tournament, took control of the robots and began to take over the world. It's time to tell you the truth. I have been manipulating that fool, Dr. Wily from the... But now, I no longer need Dr. Wily's he... We'll stop you! Follow me to my spaceship, Rush! I am Mega Man, back for the sixth time again And Mr. X will surely feel vexed When I come to kick his can For yes, you see, his true identity A bearded dog Wily, who out there could have seen this coming Here is a hint, everyone Except for me, apparently Okay Nice tunes, I mean, listen to this one of the better soundtracks on the NES again. Mega Man 4 and 6 have some sick fucking music. Uh, not to dismiss 5 or anything, but I just think 4 and 6 are the best uh, uh, original soundtracks on the NES what comes to Mega Man. And 1 for the most part, I guess, as well. Wily, the Wily tunes on Mega Man 1 were cool. But now we're playing this. Can we actually exit? Nope. Same deal, why can't you just add a button for the password screen to exit if you accidentally pick it? You have to stand up and get to your NES and press reset. Would somebody think of the fat guys? This game was released when Super Nintendo was already out. Capcom didn't want to release this game, but Nintendo pushed it because of the... Uh, because uh, Mega Man uh, was so famous at the time. So let's see if that affected the game. Again, a nice set of Robot Masters, very cool stage uh, select here. Everything looks fine, the color colors work well together. We have to go to Plant and Flame first. Because we need the utilities. Uh, the way th this game works is that uh, these four here have the beat letters. And you have to uh, kill the right Robot Master. There's a fake one and there's a right one. And by killing the right one you get beat. Which, although, is worthless. But we're still gonna get it. So uh, let's start with Flame Man, shall we? Again, we went all out with these uh, transitions there with all of the information and such. Kinda cool, although worthless. So the physics... Uh, remain mostly the same as Mega Man 5 and Mega Man 4 for that matter except for one little thing as most of you know you cannot jump out of a slide if you look at my controller I am unable to jump that's a huge problem it works if you if you uh, wait for a moment after that so if we uh, freeze the frame here this is Mega Man's stance after the slide. In that stance, you are unable to slide. So that is the problem. You can't even uh, you can't even cancel your slide and jump. You just stop in your tracks like this. So if you try to do a fast slide, you just end up pausing it and stopping it. You can't jump out of it. You can though jump in the other direction without problems. Or so I thought. Well, right now it doesn't fully work. <laughs> there we go. You have to be so precise in your inputs if you want to make anything happen. It just... it sucks. It ruins pretty much the whole game. The controls are god-awful because of this one fact. If that was fixed, this would actually be a fucking godsend to the Mega Man franchise. 
I actually kind of like this game, even though it gets a lot of uh, bad reviews and such. I do like Mega Man 6. The charge is still the same as uh, Mega Man 5, but look at that, it's so small. They learned from their mistakes there, the charge has been redone for the better. Still not as good as Mega Man 4's I believe, but still a nice uh, fix, cause we saw what happened with Mega Man 5. Otherwise the physics are just fine, everything else just works as expected, but you're gonna die a lot because you can't jump out of a slide, that's a major fucking problem. Nice introduction to the uh, oil gimmicks here. And this game is known for being a little bit racist. I'm not sure if you're noticing the team yet. Kind of the Arabian team with the oil and then fire as well. And for the fact that Robot Master Flame Man vs. Turban. Kinda strange, don't you think? Nice introduction to the Met as well. Nice, take damage on the first enemy. But, I think these are. Uh, nice positions and you don't feel like you have to charge immediately like there's there's no benefit for holding charge here this is very strange to me so you get the power adapter from from <laughs> so you get the power adapter from a flame man yet his stage has one of these breakable blocks and you need the power adapter to break it why the hell is it here such an oversight, why would you revisit the stage just to check what's under this block? If it's a 1-up, you need to cu you need to game over to change the uh, stage anyway, unless you wanna beat it again. So it makes no sense. Again, good introduction there for the enemy. I like the introductions in this game for the most part. And again, it's not really worth charging in this game. It takes... I it might be in my head, but it feels like it takes a bit longer as well. We're gonna check that, uh, in fact, we're gonna check that on the mini screen. That's because that's uh, a fun thing to know. But it feels like it takes longer. When you hold down, it doesn't the it doesn't start the charge immediately. So they nerf the charge uh, pretty well. So I like the flame gimmicks here. Even though it's not clear that you will insta-kill yourself on the flames. I don't think we've seen anything other than dead spikes insta kill you on Mega Man games so far, you can correct me if I'm wrong that's a harsh awakening to reality after you plummet down the first time like there, you, you saw that my jump did not work when I slid and here it's already uh, and here the oil is already on flames because I died on the stage so it doesn't reset the properties, I kind of hoped that it would to give you the authentic feel back. I think this, uh, and what I mean by that is of course, uh, have the same challenge as on the previous run. If this was the Mega Man 5 buster, th that cannon would have died there earlier. So I don't feel like charging, it, it almost does nothing in this game. So here, these guys only died to charge. If there's no oil under, they will just explode. Very nice introduction again. I like the uh, teaching here that's happening. And another thing you can't get if you don't have utilities. There we go. Kind of a rough spot here. There is a way to avoid all of that. I just did a crap job. But for the most part, charging is not, it's not something that I do on this game a lot, because uh, it's not as beneficial. And that's a nice thing. I could like stop here and charge, fire, stop, charge, fire, stop, charge, fire. It's not really... you don't need to do that. It's, it's good that it's not needed as much. Here I would actually do it. But it's, it's rare. Like that. Here is where you would actually charge. And notice how the charge uh, shot actually stops at the enemy, it doesn't keep going like it does in Mega Man 5. Like even if it takes 3 damage, it, it still goes through in 5. Here it actually stops like it's supposed to, like that. So n no longer is the charge a major thing in the game and that's very good. Another fucking good introduction here. I like this uh, teaching play of Mega Man 6 and it's one of the strong points and the graphics I should have commented on them already, but they're very nice. Continuing continuing that legacy from uh, 4 and 5, they certainly knew how to do that. 
some of these pits or I think just this one I'm, I can't remember now which one but I think it's that one is already in flames flames because it's connected to an earlier well that sucked I don't know what happened there so the one oil patch uh, up above with the uh, enemies that uh, engulfed it in flames is connected to the earlier one in the stage that's why this one was already in flames in fact thanks to Felon for that uh, information it's very interesting because I always wondered what that was all about and here you can clearly see how small the charge buster hitbox actually is look at that it even misses this enemy so they they took the careful route this time I uh, need to uh, comment on that a lot because I think that's important that they fixed it hard to get this e tank but can be done I just messed that up e tanks should be hard to get anyway Bit on the easy side if you uh, just take damage and get it, I suppose. It's actually fun in this game to mash, unlike in Mega Man 5, because the enemies don't have iframes anymore. I think Flame Mass H is very nice. Everything just flows pretty nicely. God damn, I, I hate that uh, jump mechanic though. As does everyone else I've talked to. So Flame Man has a pattern. I, I'm not sure if Capcom made this deliberately like this but if you're two poles away from him you'll never get hit by that uh, that flame attack there so count the poles from the background the brown poles for example that's the length you wanna be at to never get hit I'm not sure if that was their intention um, I don't think so but it's a nice way of uh, doing a no miss on it I think flame man in general is very nice it's a uh, an improvement on heat man I suppose I think it's uh, a nice boss, the, the uh, fireballs he fires from his buster are a good speed as well. I think uh, it works pretty nicely. Only thing I find strange is the turban hitbox. If you hit his head just the wrong way, it doesn't count. So that hitbox is a bit off. Let's see if I can showcase that. Well, guess not, maybe we are more lucky in the re rematches, but sometimes you can just fire through his head. It's a bit annoying, but uh, other than that, I really like Flame Man. Again, uh, maybe uh, a bit on the easy side, but if you don't know where to stand, yeah, it's really rough. Uh, I think they could have done a better job at uh, re letting you know where to stand, instead of just finding it out by luck. So that's probably my only criticism here. Have a better, uh, have a better uh, mechanic for the flames that come from the uh, floor to indicate where they are coming from. So showcase them before they come out all the way. Something like light up the floor or something to let you know where they come up from. That would be nice. So indeed, we get the power adapter. Which, uh, I'm not... I think it's a nice change of pace. A lot of people... And let's go to Plant Man, because he has the other uh, adapter. A lot of people don't like these adapters, but I think uh, it's a nice change. They had to do something to renew the series, so I guess that's nice. So if you pick the power suit here, you get this uh, little animation. And you get it every time. Unless you hold down the... Uh, I think it's the A button. So let's uh, check if that's true there. Yep, if you hold down A, it skips the animation. A lot of people just try to mash here, and that doesn't uh, work as well. So you really, if if you mash like that, it takes a longer time. So you just have to hold down A. I don't think the animation was necessary, but I guess it's kind of nice. So you hold down and you do a powerful uh, fist attack, and normally you just do a little bit of longer attack. And this attack basically can destroy blocks. It's not good for a lot of things. Mostly for challenge runs if you wanna challenge yourself. This is something you could use. And note that you can slide with this item, I'm not sure why. It's already not that good of a weapon or utility and then you can't even slide, I'm not sure why. But again, uh, nice uh, teaching here. 
a little bit on the slow side, but I like the uh, animation to it. It's so slow you could probably get hit by it before you even see it coming. But it's a nice awakening for the fact that maybe you should be more careful here. So, like these enemies as well, how you can't shoot them when they are on the ground and will have to wait for them to jump. I think that's nice. I used for the power adapter here. I didn't hold down the button. There we go. I think it's a nice uh, utility. The walking cycle I always found a little bit strange. I never liked it. It's kind of jacked. I think it's missing one frame or something. Looks weird. This guy is pretty much the same thing as uh, the Mega Man 5 one. I'm not sure why they made it such an identical uh, big guy. All of them were a bit, pretty different thus far, but this one is basically the same thing. With a bigger hitbox, mind you, even though it looks smaller. The hitbox is not as great. You just get hit more easily. It's harder to control as well. And I think it takes a lot of shots. Yep. Quite a lot. It's not bad by any means. So here, they brought back the enemies from Mega Man 5. Little flying things, except they added iframes to them. Which is kind of cool. Thank god they fixed the charge buster. So most of these positions again are a fantastic charm here. I like these enemies in the fact that if you don't charge you're in a bit of a trouble but you can still kill them quite easily if you know what to do. So you can really pick your uh, choice. Eddie. He's back again. Thanks for nothing, Eddie. Nice, we have mini-bosses. Harambe here. So you can, uh... Shoot his fist. That'll send him back. And you can, of course, uh, shoot the eyes, which will damage him. It's a nice little mini-boss. A bit on the relentless side. The screen is bugging out at the top. But if you were playing this on a uh, CRT television, you would not see that, because the edges usually get cropped out. So not a big deal for the time. A lot of these uh, glitches you see on the edges here are not visible on a CRT television because of the curve it has. That's pretty common on the NES anyway. So this stage did teach you at the uh, beginning to go a bit slower, which is nice. So if you go faster, it's your own fault. I was never a fan of these springs, and when Mega Maker added them in, and when people started to use them and place enemies on them, I just really didn't like that. But it's nice that it gives you the uh, gives you time to actually practice on them. Except if you scroll these guys in. Flame Blast, one of the better weapons in the Mega Man franchise, I believe it does. Does pretty much the same damage as the Charge Buster, if not even more. And it has sh uh, short range, so... I really like it. It uh, comes in handy a lot. So, a good teaching element again with those springs, very nicely done. You don't just place the springs on top of spikes or something. You teach the player first. Here's your spikes then. And I think you hit your head up there for some reason. No. Alright. No, something weird happens there. So here, uh, you should probably not press the jump button. Which we learned previously there. Again, a spot for the power adapter to break this. I would have hoped for energy. It's a rough stage. I would have put an energy behind that wall instead of uh, weapon capsules. Let's actually see what the Flame Blast does to this minibus. I've never tried it. Should be pretty powerful. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. The enemies... <coughs> the weapons in general in this game have good weapon tables. Uh, damage tables. So I think that's a nice job. These are probably the only enemies I don't like in this stage. They just come too fast. They're way too fast. And of course, they usually spawn right next to pits. And another uh, Mega Man 4 gimmick here have ups and downs on a spot like this, where you need to master the controls. But once you see the first one, you'll learn. But again, kind of shitty job at introducing uh, that kind of enemy. It should not it should not come out like that. 
It should come out way before you reach this point. Fun fact about these platforms, you can actually jump on them without opening them up. But if you... If you don't jump immediately, you drop through. So... It's kind of a bug, I guess. I, I guess you should not even... I guess you should not be able to just jump on them without shooting them first. That's one way to handle this. But you can indeed speedrun it that way. But for the purpose of the evaluation, let's just open these up. That's kind of a <laughs> shit spot. You have to do a little mini jump to open that one up. Again, one of the harder stages in the game, I suppose. It's hard for me to judge at this point because I played this game like 500 times. But I think this game is fine. I think this stage is fine. The way it is, there there needs to be harder uh, harder stages in the game. But I think where they missed the mark was that the fact that you get the jet adapter from this stage, when in fact the jet adapter would have been great for this stage. So I would have probably swapped the uh, adapters. So Flame Man would give you the jet adapter, and Plant Man would give you the power adapter, something like that, and then uh, place the blocks again in the stages and think about think about those as well because now you have the power adapter blocks on a stage where you get the power adapter from it doesn't make sense this last part here is notorious for being fucking difficult but once you practice it it's not a problem i just wish uh, they didn't have the have those like i just wish they didn't have two types of enemies that can just insta kill you there so the enemies that fly from the right side and the enemies that come from the water there's I think a little bit too much going on at the same time. So that's what makes it overly difficult and a bit harsh. But once you get it done, you, you, you'll you feel good about yourself. I think that's what we need to get out of this plant man. Kind of fun. Not fun enough in my opinion. He's just the same as Starman, so they just pretty much recycled a boss. They just uh, took what Starman did and made him faster. And, uh, of course, remove the gravity, but it's just n not interesting enough. He doesn't even shoot. This is all he does. Form the shield and shoot the shield. That's all he does. And walk around. It's not compelling enough. And the pattern he does, you get cornered way too easily. You just need to be out of the corners. And here's where... I think the charge buster is a bit too powerful on the bosses. So what I do for the bosses is, as well in Mega Man 4, I think I would decrease the damage of the Charge Buster against the bosses. So I would actually make it deal two damage, like some of the later uh, Mega Man games did. So Charge Buster should deal two damage to the bosses, in my opinion. That would be great. That would uh, definitely balance this way more, because now the Charge Buster is as good almost as the weakness. Although it's not as bad, bad as uh, Mega Man 5 though. Plant Man uninteresting, I think. Meh. The AI is pretty nice, the rhythm is there. I just don't think it's compelling enough. It's not It's not cool enough, but it's Plant Man. After that stage you're expecting something much worse, but then it's like, Hello, I'm Plant Man. Oh, I'm dead. Well, now we have the adapters. Uh, guess I'll catch you next time. Check the Russia uh, chat adapter then. If you agreed on what I said, leave a like. If you disagreed, leave a dislike. <laughs>